Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to give you an overview about Cisco WebEx Contact Center license, a feature that nobody likes to talk about or likes to even study very much. It is something that very uh, important for you to understand. However, when you are dealing with large scale organizations, there are two types of licensing you have available in WebEx Contact Center. You got the standard license and you got the premium license. The standard license provides like a standard agent essential functionality. That could be just a capability of logging in on the web, just answer calls, maybe transfer calls, but may not have certain functionality that otherwise premiums license will have. It does provide features like voice. A standard functionality include like browser-based agent desktop, inbound and outbound uh, voices, call recording, touch tone IVR capability, as well as a web and voice callback feature. It does provide the standard CRM connect connector, but may not, uh, for example, include things like that trigger something on CRM that can be invoke something on your UCCX side, or sorry, keep saying UCCX, on a contact center side. The premium license, on the other hand, provides all the standard features, plus it adds social channels. So if you have uh, the need for integrating with your social media page or such as Twitter or let's say uh, Facebook, then you have to use a premium because the standard will not provide that feature. The licensing is very important for managing the contact center. So let's say we are in our control hub. Uh, first of all, if you there, obviously the WebEx calling will have a different license and WebEx contact center will have different license. Uh, in the contact center, for example, sorry, on the calling side of it, you will you will see the license on the user side. So if I go to user, so you see the license right there, you will see whether it's an organizational base or a group base. So if it's an organizational base, you can do setup and you will see that what are the licenses that you have available. All right, now for contact center licensing is slightly different. It's based on, uh, I guess, uh, various factor that Cisco will work with you to uh, kind of give you more clarifications on it. Now for the license features, for example, if you are working versus standard versus premium, so this is standard, this is premium, for example, what is included? So a lot of stuff between the two are very common, such as inbound and outbound voice, intelligent skills-based routing, browser-based desktop login, web-based callback. Web-based callback is like when you fill up a form and then you want the system to call you back. That's a web-based callback. Basic outbound dialing, which is preview, uh, for example, is included on both. Call record is including on both. CRM connector for Salesforce, Zendesk, the Microsoft Dynamic, which are very, very popular CRM platform that are also included on the both versions as well. The standard customization reporting, how standard and customizable reporting is not available in, uh, uh, in your standard versions, but is available for the premium. If you are looking for real time and historical report data, uh, data storage, not included in standard. Now again, sometimes you may need that because it, it is gonna need it for your job, uh, your business requirement, you, you, you want real time reporting. So just because of that, sometimes you may have to move into the premium version of the licenses. Email and web uh, chat connect is not included on the standard, but is, it is included on the premium as well. Virtual agent, although they are, these are some of the optionals for both cases, whether you want them or not, there will be additional feature that you will have to purchase, or sorry, additional license, you will have to purchase for these features to work. Now, the target customer for uh, WebEx is usually any company that needs anywhere between one to 3,000 agent, and of course, who does not wanna maintain their own infrastructure, because some companies still are hard coded to invest, you know, infrastructure because they have invested millions of dollars maybe for the last five years. So they're already on the year two. They, they still have three years to go. So they, the company just don't move to cloud because cloud is the trend or is fancy because they have to get a read ROI. They need to make sure that a, like, uh, you know, my existing investment that I made maybe one year ago is, you know, at the coming close to the end. Because if you don't, then a lot of companies for them, it's just a waste of money because they're just trying to stay, you know, up to date with the cloud. 
So a lot of companies are not going to move everything to cloud yet. They are moving slowly as they are, their leases are expiring or maybe their contract is expiring. And as they move, they start to realize how cloud will help them going forward by saving that. And contact center is in a position to do that because it's easy to, uh, Cisco made it quite easy to migrate all your users from, let's say, on-premise to the contact center cloud uh, with a guided approach. If you are looking for more than 3,000 agents, then it is recommended to go to either hosted contact center solutions from Cisco, which hasn't, by the way, it's not a new concept. Hosting Cisco contact center solutions is not something that just happened. It, it, it predated before AWS or even Microsoft Azure. I mean, I remember when, when we were doing a Cisco contact center enterprise, we used to do it on version 7.5, I believe, on a hosted platform which was basically shared concept. So, um, you know, it's not a new concept. So if you do want to use hosted, you have that option as well. It can ex exceed up to 25,000 agent on an enterprise level. Now, Cisco has something called assurance to quality process, which means that every customer has to go through certain process in before they can get approval to deploy. And this is called the CA2A uh, uh, what he calls qual assurance to quality. Now, it is something that you work with your account manager or sales manager, you work with your partner who's responsible for uh, getting you approval for process and get all sorts of clarification design requirement. For example, you, you want to validate your high level design to make sure that everything is good. What is not required is a detailed design because that's not Cisco doesn't get involved in your detailed design. So that's something that you want to work with. Confirmation of any pro any product deliverables, you want to confirm that. Uh, what is Cisco confirmation that, that there will be no issues in the field? So these are some of the stuff that you want to work with your Cisco team to make sure that it doesn't affect something. For example, if you, you know, all of you, you have gone to your uh, migration path and you decide to do uh, WebEx contact center and suddenly realize that that product does not integrate with your uh, custom CRM. And that could be affecting your business uh, requirement, um, pr uh, operating of your business may, may become a very difficult because now you suddenly have to upgrade your CRM to a version or maybe you have to completely change the entire CRM platform. So therefore, when you want to get a contact center solution from Cisco, Cisco will work with you, say, hey, what is it that you need this for? what uh what you're running currently let us figure out if it's going to work with your system because if it is cisco is not going to sell it to you because at the end of the day last thing cisco one sell your product that doesn't solve your problem sure everybody wants to make money uh, even cisco but the reputation or supersede the money part of it for majority of the companies around the globe the process could take anywhere between 48 hours where you will go through various steps each steps you will follow certain uh, procedures where there will be a lot of email conversation uh, corresponding between them as well until the moment it gets approved for your organizations all right so that's it for about the cisco licensing and the overview about the process of getting your contact center approved for your subscription base thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video